we are recording and folks are coming in. Well, good evening, everybody. We're gonna just, um, we've just opened the room. We're gonna give just a, a minute or so to let, to let folks, folks in. Um, make sure they're ready to go and we will start our start our presentation. Let me know when you want me to start your slideshow. Um, well, I'm going to do this one. Okay. Well, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you are doing it. Never mind. You, yeah, I'm doing this one. I'm doing the Spanish one. Okay. Can you do anything? No. Hey, help me put this on here. Well, the numbers seem to be stabilizing. Um, we'll, we'll kind of start slow to let let anybody that might be um, just getting off work and trying to get their kids situated and get onto this Zoom yeah. call, what do you um, do with so they can they can check it? in. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Katie Crumpy. Um, I'm the Chief Academic Officer for the Torrance Unified School District, and I am so excited. Um, to bring this program um, to you this evening and to talk about it. My, my hope is to, and I think you will hear our enthusiasm as we, we talk tonight, um, is to share information for about half an hour and then open it up um, for the second half hour and uh, allow you to answer as many questions as possible. Um, so, so with that, I'm going to some quick introductions. Um, I, I first and foremost want to um, introduce Tracy Pramilia. Um, Tracy is, is our, um, our resident expert. I say resident because she doesn't really work in our district, but she has been a colleague of mine and a friend of mine. And she has been, um, from the very first day that she started teaching, she has started dual enroll, enrollment or a dual, dual enrollment, dual immersion programs. And um, Culver City stole her. And she has been the principal for a very long time at El Marino Language School that has both Japanese and Spanish immersion programs um, and is now uh, the assistant superintendent um, of Culver City Unified School District. And so she is helping us this evening. She will also be doing the Spanish presentation that we have at, at 630. And so we really thank you, Tracy, for, for being here. Um, uh, she, is, she has really helped us in the design of our program. Um, also, our two principals, and you will hear from them um, a little bit later, but Katie Schenkelberg is our Carr Elementary Principal, and Kelly Joseph is our Torrance Elementary Principal. Um, Dr. Scott McDowell um, is our Director of State and Federal Projects. Um, both his children have gone through dual immersion, and so we are excited for his expertise. Dr. Edon Kim, our Senior Director of Elementary Schools. Um, Nancy Gutierrez also our resident bilingual expert, um, who is our um, uh, family engagement coordinator, um, also in charge of enrollment. So she's an important one to um, uh, uh, see, her, see her face and put a name, name to a face. And also um, Kara Heinrich is, is also um, here and we're fortunate she is our director of curriculum and she has um, in a prior district also run dual immersion programs. And so we are, are excited that we've got um, um, some expertise this evening. I am going to go ahead and, um, and share my screen and get started with the presentation. Um, so I know this is a lot of words on a screen to start and they teach us to not put a lot of words on there, but you know, what is dual language? And you know, dual language is really a, a model that integrates both English speakers and native speakers of a target language. So in this case, Spanish, um, and they're in the classroom together for the entire school day. I think there's many programs through the years that have been out there and many of them have, were bilingual education programs where students that all spoke um, a language other than English were placed together. This is not that, this is, this is native English and native Spanish speakers um, together learning. Um, we, we really are excited and think that this is a positive way of instructing our students, 
both our English speaking and our English learners, um, students are learning side by side, so they can take advantage of each other's strengths and sit side by side each other um, and sharing their expertise um, and being ec both experts and learners um, in the program. Um, just three pillars of dual language um, education throughout the literature is, you know, we, we really want students to be biliterate and leave our program um, as they graduate from, I know you're in, in, entering kindergarten parents and it seems like a long time away, but trust me, having two kids of myself, it goes really, really quickly. Um, and we really want them to leave us in high school, you know, ready for what's next. And the advantage of being able to be biliterate when they leave us um, is just is just hugely advantageous for them as they as they move forward into college career, um, you know, movement in the in the future. Um, we want them to be grade level. Um, uh, at grade level in their academic achievement, as well as their socio-cultural competence um, and acceptance of one another. Um, you know, first and foremost, and I know a lot of families are, are interested like, like me, um, I was so disappointed um, when my children were not able to have a, have a program. Um, my, my children are now grown and um, there, were, there were programs that that in the in the ninety in the early nineties when they were starting um, starting kindergarten, the, many of these programs were going away. And unfortunately, literally the the year my oldest started kindergarten was the first year that the program had been eliminated, and I was so disappointed. Um, but but so you know why are we doing this first and foremost? Is that the research does say that our English learner um, students. Um, develop their language and academic skills better in a dual language program. And so I am going to spend a, a few minutes talking about the purpose and the why um, as, as an intervention um, strategy as well. And I, you, you see here, I've got California numbers just for comparison, but as a district, you know, about a third of our students speak a language other than English. Um, and, and then you see that about 13 and a half percent of them are currently in our district are English learners. Um, some of them come in initially fluent, um, speaking a language other than English and are considered fluent in English. Um, many more though, as they go through um, our K-12 system, um, learn and acquire proficiency in English and are redesignated and they, and they exit the program. Um, and so we currently have 13 and a half percent of our students that are not fluent English learners, um, about a third, 31 percent of them speak Spanish. So it is our largest language of, of English learners that are, that are spoken in our, as in our district. It's why we chose Spanish as the first language to, um, to uh, start our dual immersion program for. And then you see also you know, um, and you'll see in future slides why why we're starting in kindergarten that uh, well over the majority, 60% of our English learners are in elementary school. So let's let's use the research and teach them and teach them well and have them become fluent English speakers as as quickly as as possible. A little bit of data. Um, I want to bring your attention to the the purple um, line, which is the second one on the bottom. And this is content ELD instruction. If, if districts don't have um, dual immersion programs, this is usually the method by which we teach English learners um, to, uh, in, in, in school. And, and you can see as they go through the grade levels that, that they increase and then it kind of levels out. Um, we're not gonna talk about all the lines, but I also wanna then have your eyes go all the way up to the top you know, darker blue line and that is the long-term achievement of students that have the advantage of, of English of a, of a dual immersion program. And so by far, this is a program that, that research says um, supports the long-term ach achievement of, um, of our English learner students. So our goals are that we have high proficiency in the primary language. For our English speakers, that's English. For our Spanish speakers, that's Spanish. Um, and we want high proficiency in the second language. Um, we want academic performance at or above grade level and that positive cross-cultural attitudes and behaviors for our students. So these are our, our four goals for, for our program. Um, 
I'm going to go through a little bit this of this quick, but you know what what does some of the research you know say about about um, dual immersion? Um, we've talked a lot about English learners so far, but a faster um, acquisition of language. But also now let's kind of shift and talk about the advantages of of being biliterate, and and learning two languages is really associated with improved cognitive function um, and social interactions. Um, I've got a slide a little later on that will show that early exposure to a second language is key. Um, why in, in this um, country, we typically wait till high school. You're gonna see on a slide why us being able to start kids at an early age is, is to maximize that is, is extremely beneficial. Um, and really we want them to compete in a, in a global marketplace. This is the, when they leave us in 12th grade, we want them to be able to be competitive um, and, um, out, out in whatever it is that they move forward to, to do. Um, you know, most of the research that um, is older now um, comes from a middle or upper class um, uh, cult, um, areas. Um, and there hasn't been a lot of research done um, to, to date on, on a lot of other populations. Um, we had, there's a lot of research from Canada on the French English um, um, immersion programs. And then in, in Miami, in Florida, from the Cuban immigration and the Spanish English. Um, and they were more affluent communities that, that um, designed and, and pushed for these programs. But research is also telling us that low income students um, in dual immersion programs outperform their peers at even a greater, a greater rate. So um, we're, we're really happy to see that. Um, and then a 2015 RAND study, RAND is an educational um, um, corporate uh, uh, think tank that does research for us, um, you know, found that there's much better English reading scores um, in, in students in dual immersion than in their English only programs. And why I have the date up there is that is that honestly um, nobody's really um, arguing about the benefits of dual immersion. And so while I found lots and lots of research like from um, before to like 2009, um, you know, I ha there's not a whole whole lot being published because nobody's arguing that this isn't the best way um, to to in instruct our kids. Um, but in addition to the reading, which is vital and important, um, also the other content areas, um, both both native English and native speakers, uh, Spanish speakers do at least as well, if not better, than their in English only programs in the content courses. So science and math and social studies. Um, so very, very promising and encouraging um, data. Lots of other benefits, we could go on and on of them being engaged more in school, that their listening and communication skills are better, um, their appreciation for diversity, um, their, their ability to problem solve and think creatively. Um, you know, it's just higher self-esteem. Um, there's just so many benefits um, for, for your child to enter this program. Now, what's the criteria? So I'm kind of shifting now from talking about dual language and then now shifting into, well, what does that look like in Torrance? And, um, and this is because there, there are variances. Um, every district does it a little bit different and kind of talking about the way that we're designing um, the program in Torrance is that there will be a balanced number of native speakers um, uh, in Spanish and English only speaking students. So currently, our, our general class size in our K-5 schools is 27 students. So that would be 13 or 14 um, Spanish speakers and or 13 or 14 English only speakers um, in the class. That's that balance and I spoke to in the very first slide about having there be experts and learners in the room um, for, for that very important balance. Um, this program will continue and I say at least through elementary school. So this is a commitment. Um, this isn't something to do in kindergarten, hope your kid picks up a little bit of another language and then, and then move on. And in fact, I wanna talk for just a second, at least through elementary school is really not our, our expectation. Our, our intention is that this program goes all the way through their, their, um, their schooling with us in Torrance. 
at the very least in middle school, it is a Spanish language arts elective so that they will maintain their high level of content, um, reading, writing, listening, and speaking at a level appropriate for somebody who's already had six years of, of Spanish language development um, through school. Ideally, so, so that's, that's, a, that's a done deal. Ideally, they would have at least another subject with a bilingual instructor learning content. Like for example, it, they would take sixth, seventh and eighth grade social studies in Spanish, as well as having a Spanish language arts elective. We find, and, um, and, and our, our resident expert here might even pipe, pop, um, pipe in here, is that many of our students then go into high school at the very, very highest level of Spanish that we offer, whether it's Spanish four, and then they take AP Spanish their sophomore year. I've even seen some of them who take, we have two AP um, Spanish courses, language and literature. Some of them take them in their you know, ninth and 10th grade year at, as appropriate if they're ready. Um, and then that leaves them with, with an opportunity in their schedule to, to take courses that they are they're interested in. I've also seen students who actually start another language and they 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 go into level one of of a of another language and and start um, becoming multi multi literate. Tracy, do you have anything you want to add into that? I do. Thanks so much, Katie. Um, thank you for um, including me. And in, it just in my experience um, with the programs, um, we really we're we're talking about kindergarten here. So you all have these little ones coming in, and I am so excited for all of you. Uh, it's a great time to to begin this language immersion journey. It is a long journey, though. So I actually want you to take a moment to think about what you want for your children at the end at at twelfth grade. It's really not unlike um, math, right? It's, it's, it becomes a core content. You want them to have fluency in this language. It's a long-term, it it, it's, it's not something where um, we, we take it for a couple of years and then we're fluent in this other language. And if any of us um, had to take a foreign language in high school, um, if I were in an auditorium right now with the, all of you in front of me, I would ask you to raise your hand if you took your foreign language in high school and how well you did with that. Like if you could say after two years, you were fluent and, um, you know, I can pretty much uh, predict that most of you would have said, nope, I actually don't really remember that much of it. So it's it's this idea of, of really consistent um, uh, time in the program that leads you to this level of fluency that does require um, children who learn how to read in second and third grade who are great English speakers, they still keep reading and they still take English class all the way to 12th grade. So I want you to think about it in those terms that um, in order for them to be able to take AP Spanish Lit at the level that we need them to, they need to stay in through middle school and then they need to kind of continue it in high school as well. But as Dr. Crumpy said, um, they, if they do do that and you go through the middle school, um, the chances are good that you can take a high level of Spanish in ninth grade and either uh, prepare for AP and in 10th grade. Some of ours in, in Culver City will uh, be prepared and able to take AP right in ninth grade. Um, and then be able to take AP Spanish Lit in 10th, but the mostly the trajectory is that they take an immersion three kind of class, a, a level three, like a third year Spanish class, just to get them ready for the AP, then they take it in, in 10th grade, and then they can take an AP Spanish Lit, which is a college level course, and um, it's, it is like AP English Lit that most of our students will take is a 12th grade course and they're taking it earlier on. So it is highly, highly um, advanced, it's rigorous. And uh, you will, again, think about this as a chance for your children to really acquire this language. And so you wanna think about this like all the way into high school. Thank you, Tracy. Um, and I also want to talk about that there, there is explicit English language arts and Spanish language arts instruction taught daily 
Um, and the core academic content standards are taught to both groups of students concurrently, meaning we're not splitting kids up and putting the Spanish speakers in one room um, or the native um, English speakers in, you know, in another room. Um, and so they will be learning the same content standards um, for, for kindergarten that at any other elementary school, all the other regular programs will be, will be learning. The rollout, and I know this isn't rocket science here, but the rollout is that we are starting in kindergarten next year. And then the following year, um, moving the, that group moving to first grade with another group of kindergarten. And then you can kind of see that. So it will take us six years before we have a full program kindergarten through fifth grade in our, in our, um, on our elementary schools. So even though a couple of our middle school principals are already talking about the Spanish language arts design for their elective class, you know, that's at least seven years away. So we have a little bit of time um, for, the, for the creation of that, of that program. But they are very excited to be getting students in the future and to be participating in this as well. Hope that you can see we're all just giddy um, to be able to finally be offering this program in Torrance. Um, also, um, the model that we are utilizing is it, that you can see here um, is a 90-10 program um, where for kindergarten. So kindergarten students next year, 90% of the day is in Spanish. The 10% is made up of that explicit English language arts that I spoke about. And what I will then call like the specials. So there might be adventures in art and the docent is English speaking. Um, they may go out to PE time with a, you know, a, um, one of our play folk that, that is English speaking. Um, there may be, you know, different, um, you know, they may be part of the after school chess or the choir and, that are in English. So really the majority of, of the initial year immersion is in Spanish. Um, I want you to kind of jump though, then over to fourth grade, because regardless of whether first grade might wind up staying at 90-10 or it moves to 80-20, um, there is a, there's a, 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 a shift until we get to fourth grade. And that's an important year where um, regardless of the models that different districts and different programs utilize, most everybody gets to this 50-50 model by fourth grade. And um, some just to kind of like, what, what is she talking about? Um, there are districts that may not have enough instructors and they do a 50-50 model and they, they flip teachers. And so kids may spend part of their day in one language and part of the another. So they don't have the um, ability to do the 90-10 program that, that we are gonna utilize in the, in the fall. So, um, so again, 90% will be um, uh, Spanish, um, for next year, and then there'll be a gradual shift until a 50-50 model um, in, the, in the fourth grade. So what are we doing? And I know you know this already. So we're starting this fall. Um, it's, a, it's, it's um, you know, wh why not? Um, I think we started planning this about 10 years ago and then had to take a few pauses here and there. And, um, and so we're, we're excited and ready to go. We are committed to at least two kindergarten classes of Spanish dual immersion. Um, if we have a, um, we don't wanna turn anyone away though. So if we have enough interest, um, ideally two classes at each elementary school would, would be phenomenal. And that would be, um, and, and we have the capacity to do that. So um, both having um, collaboration between teachers at a school, but also across schools. And that was very important to us to, um, and why we're starting this at two schools and not just one, is we wanted to have that cross-school um, collaboration. Um, we think that, that together we do a lot better job than when we're all by ourselves. And so we wanted to start with that, that model um, right, right from the get-go. Um, we're we're um, going to be beginning these programs at both Carr and Torrance Elementary School. Um, both of these schools are, are have, have a Spanish speaking English learner population. And, and so it made sense. They also are two schools that have our highest um, level of low um, income population. And so when we looked at the research about how we, we assist our, um, our low income students, it made sense to offer this program um, at, at those two elementary schools. Um, I wanna take, give them each just 
30 to 45 seconds and have them mic up. Um, Ms. Schenkelberg from CAR, would you go first? I want you to just be able to be introduced to the school principal. Maybe maybe you already have children at the school or um, maybe you're, you have an entering kindergartner. I wanted to give you just a, a quick chance to have them say hello to you. So, Thank you. Hi, my name is Katie Schenkelberg and I am the proud principal of CAR Elementary. This is my fourth year at CAR and I love our school. I am, I'm so excited to continue to find ways to celebrate our multicultural community. And CAR is a very diverse campus and it is one of our greatest strengths. Uh, I also love the idea of helping our native Spanish speakers continue to grow their language um, while helping our, our English speakers become bilingual. It's, it's one of the things I've been most envious of my, my bilingual friends. I, I took three years of French in high school and I, I, I remember very little. Um, currently, I'm trying to take an online Spanish class and I'm, I'm having a challenging time, but uh, I'm so excited for our young students and, and how easy it is for their young brains to absorb new languages. Um, it's very cool and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So just thank you again for, for coming tonight and I, I hope to, to tell you more about CAR if you're interested. Thank you. Dr. Joseph? Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Kelly Joseph. I've been at uh, Torrance Elementary for, uh, this is my 10th year. And, you know, I, I just have to say that this is probably one of the most exciting things um, for our site that's gonna be here um, in 21. I, I just feel, uh, I'm so anxious to watch the kids um, develop and to watch their language skills just, just continue to grow. Uh, my staff is very excited. We're all just, uh, we're all just kind of, I guess, giddy about the whole thing. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. Okay. Um, so now, now what do you do? Um, so students applying for the program um, will select on an enrollment form um, whether they're, they're, they're applying through being a native English speaker or, or Spanish speaker. If they are a native Spanish speaker, they are gonna be given a short assessment. Um, it can be done in person or virtually um, due, due to our, our current um, situation and, and not to panic, okay? Um, we don't expect four-year-olds to know how to read and write already. So you don't need to quiz them on the alphabet and, and put those books in their hand. Actually do that, um, but it won't be a requirement for the test. Um, you know, reading to your children and, and having them ready for school is, is, um, is, is something that we, we, um, we really advocate for. But so just to kind of give you an example, um, they may be given um, three or four photos and, and some prompting, and then they're going to be asked to kind of tell a story in Spanish about what they're seeing happening in the, in the um, you know, in the photos. So not a real one, I'm making this up, but there could be, a, um, they could be in a park, there could be a bird that flies on a swing set and then flies away, you know, simple kind of pictures where they would definitely see something changing from, you know, the three or four um, pictures and then they would be able to tell, you know, tell that, that story back to the assessor. If I could add a little yes. bit to Katie, just with this, um, in my experience, um, if, if you think about this, it's, it's really not about reading and writing. It's about, think about language and think about your ability to hear and understand. So we call that receptive language, my ability to receive the language. So the, um, the uh, language assessment department is going to, uh, talk with your child and see how well they receive it. So they might give them a few commands like to, you know, touch their nose or to stand up or close the door, things like that. See if they understand it without them having to express themselves. The second portion of that assessment then does um, measure their production. So it'll measure how, if they know a word, if they know a vocabulary word, or if they're able to put together a sentence, or if they're able to retell a bit of a story. So um, all of that comes together to say, oh, they have a lot of receptive skills and maybe not so much of the, of the expressive skills, or you may have a child who has very high level of receptive skills and very high level of expressive skills. It's a, it's a big continuum. And um, so that's, what, what that is, what it kind of covers. Thank you. 
Um, and, you know, if for some reason they're not a native Spanish speaker, um, it's okay because they can then be considered as a native English speaker. Um, and, um, and one uh, more thing too. Yes. They don't have to be native Spanish or like Latino background. All right. So if you have been um, in, in a, in a, um, wherever your cultural background is, it doesn't make them a native Spanish speaker. It could be that the child has been around a lot of Spanish growing up. And so they have a measure of Spanish, but they've got zero Spanish in their family. And that's all good. If they're able to tell the story and they've had a caregiver or an uncle or somebody off to the side who's, who's spent a lot of time with them and they, they're able to speak Spanish, that's, that qualifies them as a native Spanish speaker. It has nothing to do with their name, their last name, or how they look. Good point. I guess I shouldn't give away that we actually hear that people go to preschools um, in, the, in the area. In fact, we have a principal in our district who, who is very excited about this because she had to take her children someplace else. And um, that's what she did is she doesn't speak very, uh, she is not a fluent, there's no one in her span, in her family that are Spanish, um, fluent Spanish speakers, but her kids um, um, were immersed at an early, um, at, in, at, at, in a young age before school, and they were considered native when they, when they enjoyed, uh, entered the program. So um, who is eligible? You know, all of you. If you have a kindergartner and you're interested in this program, you know, we, we want to have a spot for you. Um, we, um, so incoming kindergarten students, um, we are um, enrolling students who live within the boundaries of Carr and Torrance Elementary School first. Um, that is different from some programs. It's purely by lottery. I mean, there's no boundaries. That's not our program. Our program is the students who live in those neighborhood schools as they enroll in kindergarten. Um, that enrollment form, they will have the opportunity to select whether they want um, the English only program or whether they want to the dual, in, in the dual immersion program. If you live not in those boundaries, but you live within Torrance, um, that's, that's great um, also. Um, I, there's an additional step and that is filling out an open enrollment form in fact, for those of you that may have already done that to um, change your home school, um, you should have already received an email from us last week um, notifying you about the program and allowing you to um, alter your submission and you can change your open enrollment um, designation to CAR and or um, TE. And so that, that we reopened that up for you. And then lastly, um, if, um, the, uh, permit students, students that live outside of our boundary of Torrance, um, they they can they can permit in. So everyone is eligible um, to enter the program. Um, the you know the order that we will accept them is 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 in the boundaries of the two schools within Torrance boundaries, and then any remaining spots outside of of Torrance boundaries on on a permit. Um, some of this may be redundant. But um, you know what we we kind of scoured of what you know, what questions did we hear most often, um, and so you know just I, I think this this is a little redundant. But you know what are the benefits? And the benefits are that at an early age your child is going to become bilingual, and our English speakers are going to are are not only going to become um, masters in English, but they're going to be um, Spanish speakers. And our Spanish speakers are going to strengthen their Spanish knowledge and their content knowledge. Um, that is that is really quite honestly what is often um, missing um, in our in our students that speak another language is they're going to get that valuable content language so that they have both the English and, and the Spanish. I told you I was going to show you one more you know slide data slide and and this is it and you can just see the language score and how high it is when they start at a young age and how linearly it decreases um, when you start, the, the later that you start. And so as you heard the car principal talk about her three years in French, um, I, I similarly had three years in Spanish and um, yeah, I started um, in high school. 
And, and so you can see how well I did then because I probably matched this score um, you know, on this chart. So um, just the age of acquisition is the earlier that, that we start, the better. And um, that critical period is, is right now for your children. If, if I can add to this as well, if you go back, this is really the importance of talking about the long-term um, needs. I will tell you that um, there's, there's this critical period needs to be um, maintained. So if you don't maintain it, so let's say you're native and your age is three to seven, see how high that is. This is a, this is also a slide that speaks to our students who come into schools with a wealth of Spanish and go into English only programs and they actually lose their Spanish, even though it's spoken at home, they, they aren't really studying it. They aren't exploring Spanish. So this also points to the acquisition of a native Spanish speaker who is in an English only program. So that also speaks to the importance of maintaining both languages. So for English, they're learning English at the same time and in Spanish, they're learning Spanish at the same time. So, um, you know, this is also speaks to why you can't just leave after fifth grade because you're not gonna keep it, you'll lose it. So sometimes we're asked if they're gonna learn and progress through the curriculum slower. And that's a misnomer. No, the classes are going to be the same as the other classes. Um, they, they will, the teachers will still continue to meet in our professional learning communities. The common formative assessments that they use, um, you know, will be similar. Um, and making sure that 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 we're we're staying on track. So there is not a slowing down of the learning because they're learning two languages. And um, you know, will they fall behind? And and absolutely not. Um, national studies have shown that they they perform at least at well or, or better. Now I will say that they are learning two languages. And so when we're teaching kindergartners how to read for the first time. That, that we don't want you, know, to, you to panic. In kindergarten and first grade, we do see a slower rate um, of, of you know, learning, learning reading um, and, and we know that. And so, so we, we're ready for that. It's not a problem. Um, about the second grade, it starts catching up and third grade. And by the fourth grade, they've actually passed up their um, um, English only program peers and they outperform them. And so we, we know this. Um, in fact, I know at a, at a comparison district that I, that I used to watch their scores, um, the very first time that we'd get test scores, it used to be grade two. And, and a high achieving school would, pro, would have higher second grade scores than the, pro, than the dual language program kids. And by third grade, they were neck and neck. And by fourth grade, the, the, the um, the language school outperformed the other very high achieving school. And so it was, and I, I think you could look at that for, for many years and it was that same kind of, kind of progression. Um, and that, and you know, that's it. Now I know um, I didn't talk a whole lot about like how to register um, and, and those kinds of questions because we wanted to try to keep it to giving you as much information about dual immersion as possible. Um, if you are a CAR or a Torrance Elementary student, you will enroll the way that you normally will enroll in kindergarten and you've got dates where it's open, it's already ready for you. So, um, you know, we're ready to go. I spoke about the open enrollment piece already. If it, the open enrollment window is not closed. And, and so on our, on our district website under enrollment, all of the open enrollment forms are there. Um, and and you, you simply ask to um, move into this program and we will reach out and help you with that process. If you are from outside of the district, the permit piece, there is an extra step because you have to get released from your home district first um, at, before we can process a permit. Um, you know, just a little side note, sometimes they like to tell you no. And while they can tell you no, you can appeal. And we will help you through that too, because I can almost guarantee that 97.5% of the appeals are won. And it's actually simpler now because it's virtual. 
Um, the, our, our Los Angeles County Office of Education um, actually hears the appeals and they grant them. And so it's a step that some districts do to hoping that you won't appeal. We will help you through that process. Um, the, the best thing um, is that if you haven't yet already is on the very first notification you got and there was that application interest form where we took your information down, um, filling that out will let us keep an eye on you. And if you're within the, within the district or within CAR or needing an open enrollment, we'll be able to reach out and assist you. Um, we're here to help. Um, we've got our entire enrollment center you know, ready for you. You can call my office. Um, and then also la lastly, before we open it up to questions, Mr. Mara, is um, we, we are finishing enrollment CAR, T Torrance Elementary starts in, in just a week or so. And then um, CAR Elementary starts at the beginning of March. And we are going to take them and start doing the, the processing right away. It is our goal to let you know that you're in this program by the time we leave for spring break the first week of April. And so that doesn't mean if folks were to miss that deadline that we're still wouldn't would take applications and allow them in. We absolutely will as long as there's space. Um, but we wanna allow you the planning time to, to let you be, um, um, know that you're gonna be in an, our inaugural first class of our kindergarten Spanish dual immersion program. So with, with that, um, Mr. Mara is, is helping us out. And if you raise your hand, he's going to move you into this um, panel room. And I just ask that in the, um, that you ask one question and that will let every, that'll let us get to more people that have questions. And then if there's time at the end for additional um, questions, we'll let you come back for a second question. So if you please keep mm -hmm. your questions just to, to, to one for now so we can answer um, people's questions. So Dr. Crumpy, this is Scott. Yes. Um, I've been going through the chat. It's, it's long, there's a lot of questions and I've, okay. I've, I've written down a few that are kind of broad that a lot of people are asking. Maybe if I shot you those first, it would address a lot of the, the questions oh. and then additional, are you okay with that? That would be great, thank you. Okay, can you, um, can you just clarify that the program is intended for next year's kindergartners and talk a little bit about our age appropriate placement because there's a lot of questions about repeating kindergarten, things like that. Yeah, so Torrance Unified and I think every school district around, we place age appropriately, meaning that you turn five um, before September 1st, 2nd. Um, and and um, a, a retention is a process that you would go through in kindergarten at your home school. Um, it is not intended that you retain yourself so that you can join this program and, and you know, and repeat kindergarten. So re retention is a formal process. Um, it's, it's permittable, but it, it's a process that you go through with your child's teacher and your child's principal um, that, that you are, are actually retaining um, because of, of um, academic or social emotional concerns that of developmentally with, with your child. So um, we're taking students that are entering an age appropriate for kindergarten in the fall. Okay. And then uh, uh, also there were quite a few questions about teacher selection, teacher qualifications. Um, what can they expect from the readiness for the, for the teacher in this program? Absolutely, great question. So. Teachers who teach in this program both have the multiple subject credential, which is the credential re required to teach elementary school. And they also have their biliteracy um, language and development credential. It's called the BCLAD, but they have their credential that they are biliterate um, in Spanish. Um, that, so so those are, that's the added dimension and component of being able to teach in this program. Um, we have many, um, qualified um, teachers in our district already. Um, what we're doing right now is soliciting their um, interest um, and, um, and uh, before we, we move forward with the selection. So obviously you know, we don't already have a teacher because we just got this board approved and we're going through a process to, to again, to solicit that interest. In addition though, so being qualified is one thing. 
but then having training and, and, and experience is another. And so we are, we are working on both um, um, training on the materials that we will use and training on how to, what strategies that best work in this program, but also how, how you structure a dual immersion day. And lastly, the, the acquisition of language. And, and so a, a study of, of how your children are actually acquiring um, both English and Spanish language. And so there's kind of four components that, and so there will be quite a bit um, of professional development that will start as soon as, um, as we have the teachers selected and are, are ready to go. We use, as you may know, if you have other children in this district, we are a guided reading as a signature practice um, district. And we will use um, guided reading in Espanol as a main um, um, strategy in um, learning how to read in Spanish as a well uh, with, other, with other Spanish language arts materials that we are, we are purchasing. Um, your students will then get a running record. It's a score, it allows us to track their progress and they will do what we call a running record in both English and in Spanish. And so we will be able to track that progress um, and that the teachers will receive that training as well. So uh, kind of exciting, a lot of training um, that, that our the teachers will, will receive prior to the start of the, of the school year. Um, there are a lot of questions uh, about uh, the residents who do not live in the Carr or Torrance Elementary area. Mm -hmm. um, can, can you talk a little bit about the implications of open enrollment, especially beyond uh, K-5? Yes, so good question. So, so open enrollment technically is a change of, per, is a permanent change of your school of residency. So your school of residency is where you live. So what you would be doing in open enrollment is permanently changing um, that school. So moving to Carr Elementary School Car matriculates to Magruder Middle School and North High School. Um, Torrance Elementary School matriculates to Hull Middle School and, and then Torrance High School. And, and so that would be um, the, path, the pathway where the Spanish language arts elective and program would, would continue. If, if, now we don't wanna say that because we, we, you've heard um, um, us speak about and, and Tracy Pamilia, you know, emphasized that that really for biliteracy, we need to keep this program going going throughout. Um, but there there are, um, you know, you're you're not stuck if if there is a movement that you desire. What you have to do is is open enroll and change your school again. If if that would be um, something that your family would need to do. Um, just a couple more, and then uh, uh, can students with special needs, IEPs, speech and language services, are they eligible to apply for this program? They are, absolutely, great question. Um, absolutely, um, in fact, in fact, um, Dr. McDowell and I, and he, with his assistance, you know, we looked um, hard for this research, and we found nothing that said that, that being in a dual immersion class, uh, program um, was uh, uh, detrimental to their learning. Um, if if they're gonna if if whatever their um, um, disability may be that that we're that we're working with, they're gonna have that in English or or in the dual program. Now, I do think that we want to talk about it as an IEP team to make sure that it's the right choice for your. Um, um, uh, for your, um, uh, for your family. Um, but, but the, there is a, there, and I know I'm, I, of course a kid's, po kid's name and face popped into my head. Um, it, it used to be in the old days before I think they understood that, that when kids were struggling um, and there was, they maybe lived in a, in a um, bilingual home. And we, we know that, that quite often when there's um, what, what, the way that, that language is learned um, is learned and is in the brain is that one parent start, speaks one language and the other one speaks another language. And that way it goes into two different parts of your brain and you don't have to translate. You just know this 
this language. Um, gosh, I remember that all the way from my teacher credentialing classes. But um, um, and they used to say, "Stop doing that. You're you're you know you're hurting hurting the kid." And that that is not um, that is not the case. We're not going to say that there might that in every single situation it would be appropriate. But I think it's 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 um, it's absolutely permittable, and it, and at least we should have a, a conversation to talk through what's right for your family. Okay. And then last one before. Uh... I pause. Uh, it's two parts, but they're related. Can you talk a little bit about the instructional materials that will be used in this program, as well as um, you talked about the gains by English learners. Can you mention a little bit about the gains uh, for the English only students in the program? Yeah, so I'm going to take the second part first and then go backwards. So, so the research tells us that that, and I can go back to that wheel of all of those, those benefits of dual, but achievement wise, it says they do at least the same, if not better in content courses that they may be learning science in Spanish, but then they have to take the state exam in English. They do at least the same, if not better than students in an English only, in an English only class. Remember the research said that in reading, they actually outperform. Um, and so, so academically, the English only student learning Spanish is at an advantage um, in, in this program. Material wise, and one reason why also when people have said, you know, why, um, you know, why Spanish first, um, but the materials are readily available. Um, in, especially in our primary grades, all of our materials, our books are consumable. Kids, you know, you rip out the pages, they write right in them. And every year we replace and every kid gets a consumable book. Every single one of our adoptions, um, math, science, social studies, I mean, even in English, um, has a Spanish um, version of it. So let's say you have twins. I'm not recommending that you do this. And you have a twin in a regular program and a twin in a in the in the dual immersion program. They will be using the exact same math book. One is just in Spanish. It's a, they're exactly the same. Um, so we will just if we normally order you know a thousand um, kindergarten science books, we will order a thousand minus however many dual immersion students we have in English and then order in Spanish. There's actually no cost. It's the same cost of, of the adoption. The additional piece that, that we will have is I talked about the guide and reading. And so our, our teachers will have those materials in Espanol, um, but also we will, have, we will adopt materials for Spanish language arts. We have not yet decided um, on, we're, we're kind of looking between two programs right now. One, and they, they both have, um, or, um, of things that we like and things that we, you know, we, we want pieces of each and maybe that's what we do, but we are, we're still deciding on, on those materials. We're very excited though. We have already placed an order. Um, we're, we're, we're hoping and planning big that we're going to make these four classrooms. And so we have already ordered all the teacher materials. We have ordered classroom library materials. So the, the teachers will have classroom libraries in Spanish. We have ordered all the guided reading books. For all of the language, for all of the levels, um, for the classes, and we have a meeting on Friday where our principals are coming back because we've been doing some research on what we will put into the school libraries as well. And so we have um, Tracy, Dr. Kirby. Um, I know that we're getting into almost six o'clock, and there's there's a. I wanted to go back to. Um, the the um, English how the English only students go and if so if I can just interrupt really quickly just to kind of just remember as well that um, English the English the students who are considered English only again aren't don't have to be only English they don't have to be monolingual English so for example if if you have come from a background with a third language for example um, your child just has to demonstrate proficiency in English in order to be qualified as an English speaking student that so that will be the criteria so if you are uh, 
uh, fortunate to have a, a third language, for example, in your family, um, that the only criteria is that your child have enough English to qualify as an English speaking student um, through um, our English assessments known as it's called the LPAC and they just have to have fluency in that in order for them to be able to be considered to be part of this program. You either have to have fluency in Spanish or fluency in English. I just want to make sure that that got in there because there were a couple of, of yep. questions about student, uh, families with a third language. Very good. How are you doing with the questions, Dr. McDowell? Um, those were the repeaters. I'm sure individuals have. There was one other question, if you'll indulge me. Someone asked uh, what my experience as a parent for my own children was, and it's Please. probably for the good of the group. Uh, both my students were English speakers, and they went through a dual immersion program uh, through fifth grade. They were able to continue with a period of the language through middle school. Uh, both of them took a ninth grade uh, call it immersion honors course. And then they both took the AP exam in, uh, in 10th grade. And uh, as, as non-native speakers, they both scored fours on the AP exam, finished their language. Uh, one is in college right now succeeding and the other is uh, close to graduating from high school. And I feel very fortunate to, uh, in my opinion, be the parent of two bilingual children. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and 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 go an, an additional you know ten minutes. Um, if if panelists have to go, that that is okay. Um, and allow some other questions um, that come up, Mr. Mara. Um, okay. That. Yeah, so I'll call on your name, um, and I will go ahead and um, allow you to speak, and you can unmute your your mic and ask your question. So I've got first Janet Fernandez. So Janet, go ahead and unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Oh my gosh, I've been on the edge of my seat. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that Torrance is aligning with the um, Global California 2030 initiative. I can't wait to get my daughter into either Torrance or CAR. Um, I do have a couple of questions, but they're kind of related. So if you cut me off, that's okay. I, I won't, you know, it won't hurt my feelings. Um, I understand that you're going to be using the curriculum the Spanish version of uh, uh, my assumption is Wonders So Maravillas probably is what you're going to be using. Well, we are also looking at Benchmark Adelante. Oh, wonderful. That's a great program. Wonderful. Actually, okay. Kind of, I'm a little bit prejudiced to that one, but we have not yet decided. Okay. Well, I enjoy that one very much. Uh, so that kind of goes to my next question, resources for the teachers and just equitable DI resources because coming from this DI world, um, you know, there are resources out there, but oftentimes they're not very equitable to EO um, English only students, and, and we can't really measure apples to apples. So my question is, um, I guess, assessments. When we're talking about assessments, how will the district be able to measure the performance of a DI student to that of an EO student um, in terms of progress and, and any needs that need to be met? So we predominantly use the running record through our guided reading program. And so we, we have those benchmark kits that we use um, and we, we track and we, we like that because it is not, um, you know, it's, it's on a scale of A to Z, A being a beginning kindergarten reader through Z being a, fluent eighth grade. And, and, um, and so when somebody is a level D, which is the level that, for example, we like them to be when they exit kindergarten, um, that means something to the second grade teacher as well. It's not based on, you know, a, a second grade material. So we will be tracking that um, in both English and in Spanish um, through the running record. Fantastic. And one more tiny question. Um, I know that we're starting with... Okay. Okay, sorry, with kindergarten, we're starting with kindergarten and, you know, parents often end up leaving the program. And then my biggest question is combo classes. Um, so when we're looking at first grade, um, what's Torrance's plan for combo classes? Is it written into your master plan? Can you please talk to me a little bit about that? Thank you. So we're, we're that's a great question and we're hoping to uh, uh, avoid that. And, and I think if I can just answer that yeah. just as a former principal. Uh, uh, thank you for that question. We, especially at first grade, 
um, you really can, you can start, you, you, we can do a process called backfilling. So a student who um, leaves the program, um, I, in my experience, and I have uh, well over 20 years, um, either um, coordinating these programs, uh, teaching in these programs, or being a principal of these programs, we've always been able to find students who are able to to um, come into the program, either with a measure from a, another dual language program themselves or with enough language to be able to capture it. Especially in first grade, um, we, we, are, we have been able, to, I've actually been able to backfill in second grade with, um, with um, families that haven't had it before. But normally I've really never had that a, a huge issue. Um, it, at least in the Spanish programs. The Spanish programs are relatively um, uh, safe enough to, to have to, to be able to find students that could fill that. I'm gonna move on to the next person. So I'll allow you to ask your one question, then I'm going to disconnect you. So uh, think hard about your question. All right, uh, we have Jacqueline Cohen-Steinberg next. Go ahead, Jacqueline. Hi. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I've been waiting forever to have a dual immersion program anywhere, wherever I live. So this is really exciting. Um, I actually just put the question in the chat, but I was curious about um, if it's only going to be limited to two classes, because I have a feeling you're going to get a lot of demand. So um, is it going to be only limited to two classes or would you guys maybe open another class? Because I don't know, I have a feeling that you know, you're going to get a lot of demand. <laughs> wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be awesome? So yeah. we're committing to, um, to, to two classes regardless, but we can double that and go to four if there is interest. So, um, and that's actually our preferred number is to have four classes at each grade level in the district. Um, if we can, if we can get there, um, not having, um, dipped our toe, um, in, into this platform for decades in Torrance. Um, we just didn't know. And so we're actually um, planning for four, um, but committing to two, to two for, for sure. So we're, we're hopeful we, we get, we get the, the interest, but the four classes are at two different schools. So two, um, two school, two gr classes per grade level. Um, the, the, we're not turning the entire school into a dual language school. The school will have a portion of a dual language and a portion of, of English only. Uh, Dr. Crumpy, we have a guest here. So President Liu, uh, <laughs> go, go, go ahead. Great, thank you. Thank you, Gil. Um, uh, I just wanna say a few words. I'm very excited that we are starting this wonderful program. I want you to know that as president, I intend to make it a priority that it's as successful as possible. Thank you, Dr. Crumpy, for spearheading this project um, program. Thank you, Dr. McDowell and Mr. Gill, um, Mr. Mara, for putting on this information session. Sure. Thank you, President Liu. You have had a busy day, so thank you for participating this evening. Thank you for this. <laughs> See you later. Uh, next, we have uh, Lisa Yim. Go ahead, Lisa. Yes, hi, um, I wrote my question. So if we permit into Torrance L, but would rather prefer enrolling at Adams or some other school, um, and we don't end up getting into the program because it's full, what are the chances that we might get stuck at Torrance L and not be able to be part of the program? So can I just ask a clarification, make sure I understood you correctly. You're gonna be applying for a permit into our program? Yes. Okay, so when you apply for a permit, and Nancy, if I'm saying something wrong, please unmic, but you're allowed like a first choice and a second choice on the form. So you could write down, um, you, you said Adam, so I'm gonna use that. You could yes. write down Torrance Elementary Dual, first choice, Adam oh. Elementary School, second choice. Oh, thank you. Okay, did I understand that question correctly? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, next we have um, Neela Tahara Day. Go ahead, Neela. And I, and I, I, 
I, I can't monitor the chat. And so thank you everyone that's helping me with this as I'm doing this, but I did see the question just pop up. The same would apply for open enrollment. There is a first and a second choice on, on open enrollment as well. So sorry, um, Nyla. Okay, thank you. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm needing some reassurance because this is, it's uh, starting to really stir up in our family and we've even been called stupid to be even attempting this. So um, I just wanna know, I need assurance as to why would I enroll my child in a school that performs at, uh, according to the records, 50% ranking and leave a school that's performing at 90% ranking. I don't wanna offend anybody, but I just need to address that elephant in our living room. May oh. I? Well, I, I just- You go ahead and then I will, uh, because I will say that I did this, I did that for my child and so- and I, was, and I was ready to do that for my child and then the program stopped. I think you have to look at this as in an individual opportunity for your child. And, and the fact that your child is going to be having that opportunity to be part of a multicultural diverse school, first off, um, and, and grow up understanding that, but, but leaving um, us in 12th grade um, far ahead by being biliterate um, versus in an, in, a, in an English only you know, classroom at a, at a different school. I mean, that's as a, as a parent, I mean, I think you, if you were here at the beginning, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so disappointed that the program um, was not there for my, my children. And I think I'm kicking myself that I didn't even, you know, move and fight somewhere for, for them to, to, to be able to have the opportunity to be biliterate. Tracy. I think I'll just ditto that, but just also just share that in my experience, I, that's exactly, um, it, it, I did not have that fear, although I did have family members who would say to me, um, uh, I, I live in Culver City and I would have been able to send my children to high performing Culver City schools um, in the very beginning, but I, I worked in South LA and I believed so much in the program that I was starting that had it was in a predominantly Spanish speaking neighborhood and it desperately needed English speakers. So I put my own children in the very first dual language program in South LA in an area district that served over 64,000 students and there were no dual programs there. And I would have been happy for that school to have the test scores that are at um, Carr and Torrance Elementary. Trust me, the, the, these were very, very low socioeconomic working families, hardworking families and, and predominantly Spanish speaking um, community. And um, both my children excelled in that program. And when they did actually end up, when I transferred out and uh, went and became principal in Culver City and, and they were there, um, their level of Spanish and their academic language and their academic achievement was on par, if not higher. I have both of my children um, who went to that school in South LA um, are either graduated from college, very highly selective schools, both of them. And um, it is again about your commitment to your child's biliteracy and bilingualism that will drive your, your, um, your assurance. You know, we have these, these car seat laws that a lot of our you know, kids don't want to be in the car seat, but we make them sit in the car seat. It's kind of the law. And that's kind of the way that you have to view this. It has to be a, a non-negotiable inside yourself to be able to have that conversation with family members and neighbors who are saying, well, why would you do something like that? And you're going to say, because I believe in this and this is the way that my kid is going to be able to learn Spanish. Um, another example is to, you know, going to, to, to learn the piano, it's not easy to learn the piano, but if you make them take piano over and over, they will become proficient in, in piano. And it's, it's the same kind of commitment that you're going to have to put for your child and really not worry about the, the doubters out there. Great. Uh, okay, next, uh... I, I, I mean, I, I could do this all night, but we are pivoting over to um, Spanish. Um, and I'm a little stressed about that because I'm going to try to speak Spanish and do an introduction. Um, but so I'm going to take what, you know, one more question. Um, I, you know, um, in fact, Scott, would you mind to post my email address in the chat? I mean, I think people can find it pretty easily. I am happy to speak with you 
to answer any other questions that didn't get answered today. Um, um, this recording is gonna get posted. We're even using a lot of your questions. So thank you to, um, to add to our frequently asked questions, our FAQs. Um, and so you're, you're actually helping us tonight. Um, and so, um, and we're, 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 I don't know that I, I can find you easily in the, in the, if the questions we go through the chat afterwards and I, and I can find you in an email somewhere to even, um, get your, any questions that we didn't, um, get answered. Um, we will, we will attempt to do that as, as well. So one, one last question, Mr. Murrah. Okay. Uh, we have Jesse. Now I have is Jesse HP, but I assume that's your computer that you're on. Go ahead, Jesse. Hi, perfect. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. Um, my daughter is in first grade at Walter Elementary. Um, and so we obviously like to keep the kids in the same school because uh, we live two blocks away and they can walk there. And so it's very convenient. Is there a chance in the future that this program is going to expand to other schools? I know you talked about just the two classes and might maybe expanding into more classes within those schools, but are other schools in the district going to have the opportunity? And if so, my son will be in kindergarten next year. Will he have the opportunity to get in as a first or second grader if that opportunity does show up at Walteria down the road? Yeah, so I I, I can't answer that. I, I know at this time we, we're gonna just start this program at the two schools and 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 uh, make this the most robust, strong, you know, program for dual immersion in our district. It is a district program. So I wanna be clear, these are these are district supported district programs at these two elementary schools. Um, and, and that's why the, the, the open enrollment and, and, you know, to move your kids there. Um, we have had um, discussion, but it's just discussion at this point about whether we would expand to other languages, but I can just hypothesize that that will not be in the next three years and that we need to get solidify this and, and get this program up and going um, before we would um, you know, and, and see what the interest is and whether we can sustain the, the first programs before we would, we would need to, you know, expand to, to others. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate your time um, and, and really looking forward to meeting you in these, the programs um, at, at CAR and TE um, in the fall. And, uh, and, and happy to answer any, any questions um, that, that you have that didn't get answered this evening. Thank you very much.